Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Chalquist. This is the eighth of our Terra Psychological Inquiry videos, and in this one, I'd like to say a little bit about how to present your research. Now, the final product usually of a Terra Psychological Inquiry is something that we call a transmuting exposition, which is a polysyllabic phrase for not just a report, but kind of multi-layered um, story presentation experience that summarizes your topic, goes into some detail about what you explored, and then offers some findings. And this could be for a funding recommendation, a work report, uh, or in the academic world, a thesis, a dissertation, maybe a paper for a journal, um, all kinds of possibilities. But it's your own unique way of showing exactly what you found and engaging others in that process. So to begin with, uh, a couple of recommendations for what to actually have in it. And there's more about um, some ideas for presenting this in my book, Terra Psychological Inquiry. In one of the final chapters, I walk you through how to do this. But for now, one thing to bear in mind is that uh, when you first write it up, now this depends a lot on why you're presenting it and to whom, but we usually include some little bit about why the study was fascinating to us, why we got involved in it in the first place, telling a, a personal story and not spending too much time on that. And more about story a little bit later in this video, but uh, it's it's okay to show how much you were involved in the topic and how much it means to you. It engages the audience more. Uh, if you're excited about the topic, even with people who don't like the topic, they may still get excited by your enthusiasm. And you want to show people how much you loved what you did and how transformed you were by it. Having said that, though, it's important to keep the focus on the topic and not yourself. Uh, even in those cases where your own life is deeply woven into whatever it is that you're studying, whether it's uh, our psychological connections to place or home or the elements or a forest or what have you, all those areas that Terra Psychological Inquiry likes to look into. Uh, it's not about you, it's about the work. That's something that needs constant reminder, especially for those of us who have been injured in some way psychologically, and then we're looking for therapy or catharsis or what have you. Um, this isn't the place for that. And it can get messy because inevitably when you do deep work like this, it does heal you to some extent. It does transform you. And uh, there may be aspects of your own personal story that have been silenced and you want to bring those forward. So um, that's fine, but make sure that it's about the topic and not so much you because the Otherwise, it turns into I this, I that, I this, and then you're forcing whoever's reading this or whoever's hearing you present to constantly focus on you instead of on whatever the issue is. So um, if you find yourself writing and you, you see I, 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 I all, all over the place, um, restructure that so it puts emphasis on what the topic is because that's what will excite people. Uh, another suggestion is to sit down before you do any kind of writing or presenting and really visualize which audiences you're reaching out to. Everyone is too broad. <laughs> there must be specific people that you can visualize, some specific groups of people. And so try to narrow that down. And incidentally, if you get published, this will help you a lot with getting published because your publisher in a proposal doesn't want to hear that this is for everybody. They will immediately think of several groups who would never benefit from what your work is. So be modest, be humble, and narrow it down to a few. And uh, as a kind of delightful consequence of this, oftentimes your work will reach groups of people that you never had any idea it would reach. So uh, another example of um, pre-planning is to go through and, and do an inventory on what are the purposes of this research. There should be something in the, the final expo, the final write-up or report that talks about the significance of your study, the, maybe the significance to certain fields that you're working in, fields of inquiry or disciplines, maybe professional significance, uh, community significance, that, that kind of thing. It, why, why does this work matter? Who's changed by it? So you'll need to address that. 
also um, related to this is why your findings matter. And this includes the whole question of if these findings are taken seriously, what would change? What voices are being brought forward that weren't heard before? That kind of thing. So be sure to address that as well. And then finish somewhere toward the end with some really solid, they're often called takeaways, but some solid things, maybe two or three final impressions that you want to make or um, pieces of information that you think are important or even calls to action. So that's a good way to end. Now, as you're working on this, and th this issue may have come up earlier in the study too, especially when you're gathering information or you're planning what you're going to do to gather information or you're analyzing data or what have you. If you have any background in science at all, you know that research often brings up issues of validity, generalizability, and reliability. So um, my book deals with this and so does a huge chunk of the literature on qualitative inquiry, but the short version is that first of all, validity has to do with, am I studying what I really think I'm studying? And there are quite a few things that we put in place in parapsychological inquiry to validate that, to make sure that we really are studying what we think we're studying. And we have lots of ways of checking on that. So uh, my book deals with that to some extent. So wouldn't worry too much about validity. I wouldn't also worry too much about generalizability and reliability because these are standards that are more relevant actually to natural science research. <clears throat> they both refer to whether we can replicate a study, so, which makes sense if you're looking at something in terms of cause-effect relationships and if you're looking at uh, things that you can actually quantify. So if you, if you are interested in discovering, uh, let's say, I mean any example from the history of science, is it actually true that uh, things fall at the same speed or different speeds through the atmosphere? What about um, the luminosity of the sun and stuff like that? So um, energy flows in the environment, you know, studying the ecology of how things work. It's important to be able to replicate findings across studies so that each time you do a study, you get the same or similar results because what you're looking at is a fixed reality. You're looking at something that's uh, objectively real. When we're studying quality of relationships, when we're studying dimensions of consciousness, this really isn't a criteria that applies. There is a, a qualitative way of holding reliability in the sense that um, if you're coding data, and I talked about this in the previous video in number, uh, I think it was seven, um, when, you're on, when you're doing that, Having different people code the data can give you what researchers call inter-rater reliability. So that's a good thing. But in general, the, the, the premise of there is one fixed reality and we need to study it in ways that isolate variables doesn't really apply to this kind of work. We're looking for different qualities. We're looking for the stringency with which we systematically explore things. Uh, we're looking at what do we do to eliminate internal bias and things like that? So uh, those, those um, research criteria of rigor that apply to the natural sciences often don't really apply to qualitative inquiry and or parapsychological inquiry in particular. So I mentioned this in earlier videos too about whole person research and doing things from a different perspective and also relying on the research methods that are that really characterize the humanities. Quality of scholarship um, is what we're doing significant. Uh, are people transformed by it? Those kinds of characteristics do apply. So bear that in mind. Now when you're presenting research, you can think of it in the context of telling a story. And it doesn't necessarily mean literal storytelling, although you can do that. But Telling the story with art, with film, with ceremony, those are all great ways to do it. With music, with movement, um, parapsychological inquiries have used um, things like dance and weaving and festivals. Maggie Hipman did a beautiful film called Salt about the, the presence of the Great Salt Lake in people's lives who live around there. Um, lots of examples from academia as well as outside of it. So. Uh, telling the story and, and what, what's actually happening. That seems to be more um, relevant 
and enriching and transformative than simply giving facts. Also, look for ways to involve the audience in the telling. Um, doing, sometimes doing exercises, uh, having them fill in pieces of the story, more interactive than just lecturing people. Uh, if you're using slides, slideshows, um, be sure to avoid the uh, frequent error of including too much text on the slides. And what text does appear on the slide should be basically a prompt for what you have to say about the images that appear. Um, also, if you're using tech of any kind, always have a plan B in case it fails. Uh, very useful. So, in presenting terapsychological inquiry results, what we want to see happen is that, and this begins actually before you ever present the results, the, the quality of consciousness of everyone involved deepens, complexifies, and it, and it should bring not only in you and the people, any people you worked with, but the audience for your research as well, it should bring a new way of looking at something, a fresh vision of how things work. And people should walk out of the presentation thinking, wow, I've never seen it that way before. I've never heard about the underlying story. In all of this, we're really seeking to bring what has been discarded from collective everyday consciousness into focus, into sharper focus. So that's a useful thing to remember too as you do the research and present it. And so uh, finally, make sure that when you do present that your enthusiasm about the topic shows and that you give some sense of what not only why this topic matters to you, but why it matters to, to a lot of people, to everybody involved in the study. Because what you're really doing is you're taking aspects of human experience in relation to the more than human world and you're bringing them to the surface so that our relationship to that world can change and therefore our relationship to ourselves and each other can change too for the better.